About a month ago, Gypsy went and saw Fay Tooth and Snake Mother, and she found a band that hit so hard, that was so harsh and heavy and pummeling, it could only be a hurricane named Effing Kim. All right. Hi, everyone. This is Clean and Sober Stoner, Tales from the Heavy Underground, and I am Gypsy, and I get to be here with the band Kim out of Oakland. And I feel so, so lucky. I got to see this band a few weeks ago in Oakland, and they were opening for Fade Tooth and Snake Mother, and I got so lucky to be there. So I wanted to just give you guys a moment to introduce yourselves, and then I'm going to ask you a bunch of questions. Cool. Awesome. Go for it. I'm Jessica. I play guitar and bass, and I sing in Kim. And I'm Laura. I got to oh. interrupt, Jessica. You sing and you scream. Yeah. <laughs> yeah well, well, yes. Laura, sorry. <laughs> she yeah. does it all. Do it yes. all. Uh, I'm Laura and I play drums. Okay. Yes, you do. And I play guitar. Okay. Thank you guys so much. It's so great to have you here. Uh, I love going to live shows. I, I think... We can enjoy so many things through recorded music, but being at a live show, there's just nothing else. You, 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 can't, you can't find all the feelings and all the good chemicals any other way. So c driving a couple hours out to see Fay Tooth and Snake Mother, and then getting this opening from the three of you that just blew me away was awesome. Just so awesome. So you guys are out of Oakland, California, and I know you said you're in your practice space right now. I'm very curious because I couldn't find a whole lot of info about you guys. Uh, how long have you been together? We, exactly. Yeah, we, I'm like, do we know? We started playing in late 2015. Um, so almost nine years we've been playing together, which is wild. It is wild. Um, and... But Bradley and I started playing together even earlier, I guess just like earlier that year. Yeah. In 2015. Um, and we were just we were just doing dueling guitar vibes, basically. Ooh. And then Bradley um We met each other, yeah. I started dating this person and I met Bradley. And then Bradley was like, Hey, do you want to be in a sludge metal band with me and my friend Jessica? And I was like, yes, I do. I didn't know anything else about it. And I just said, yes. You just said, yes. Um, yeah. <laughs> sometimes that's how it works. <laughs> yes. Well, then we played together and it was magic. Like first meeting magic. So then we were just like, okay, here we are. We've yeah. got it. Wow. How lucky. That's, that's fantastic. Well, and, Very it was much magic. So. and I, I think that whole that whole show was just magic. Uh, we got there early and got to watch the sound check and all that. And probably got in a few people's way, but <laughs> I was forgiven, apparently. <laughs> so first of all, the the set you guys did was was great. I loved it. I started as soon as I could started listening to your recordings. So I was going to the gym probably the next night and I, you know, put my Raycons in and hit play on this, on this, uh, album, Sir Kim, right? Or is it Kim, Sir Kim? Sir Kim. Sir, Sir Kim. Kim. Yeah. And the first song, the very first song, I listened to it once through and I put it on repeat and no joke. That song repeated. I let it keep playing through my entire workout and all the way home, walked in the door, looked at my roommate and said, you got a minute? <laughs> <laughs> Just sit with me. And I streamed it to uh, my big JVC speakers and we sat on the floor right in front of it and we were just silent. And then it got done and my roommate said, damn. Uh, cool. <laughs> yes here's the thing about that song it's it's there there are no key changes it's doing the same thing for a very long time over yes. until the very end and i never wanted it to stop it's this <laughs> incredible heavy round that is just hypnotic and sexy so sexy so cool. i love it 
<laughs> really, really, like I couldn't get over it. And I've listened to the whole album several times through. And every time I do, I go back to that one and I put it on repeat and I just got to hear it a few times. Uh, I would love to know more about the creative process that led to that. That song was such a fun one to write because we just got that riff. I don't even remember how. I feel like you brought that riff. Yeah. Yeah. And then we just like played it in different like with different emphases like and we were kind of just playing you know jamming on it and then we both actually we totally. both were like laura and i love this band jucifer that not a ton of people like yeah i know jucifer um, not enough people well like. not a lot of people know i guess <laughs> it was like a time and a place so yeah we love this band jucifer they're a they're a duo and they're just like this, this riff really reminded us of it. So I was like, Oh, we should, we should make a song on this riff. That's just like the same thing the whole time really driving, but with highs and lows, you know? And so we just kind of worked on it one night. And then I like, usually when we do, when we write a song, well, I'll kind of just like sing things that are nonsense just to like, see how, like what melodies are, what's like how the vocals will go. And then I was doing that and repeating certain things and like phrases. And then I got this idea to frame the lyrics and like the story of the song around this kind of like prevalent arch archetypal story of, of the devil leaving hell and li giving it to this basically the queen of hell. So like so a woman taking over hell and so then I kind of was like, we were riffing on the story and the idea being like, this woman has sold her soul to the devil so many times she calls, she calls the devil to sell her soul again. Right. And he's like, can't. And she's like, well, then you're basically a loser. Give me the keys. Yeah. I'll take over. <laughs> so, you know, I mean, and it's interesting because we did think like, oh, this song is kind of sexy because there's this way in which like, you know, it's this like power dynamic, it's this relationship, but it's also like about desire, about control, about power, um, about possession, you mm -hmm. know, it was definitely about like hunt power play. Yeah. yeah, definitely a power yeah. feel to it. Yeah. And correct me if I'm wrong, but it's called Madam, right? Yeah. yeah so yeah. the idea of being Madam C. Yeah. <laughs> That's fantastic. Oh, I love that there's such a story to that and that it was so intentional because some, you know, you don't know when you're listening. OK, did this just happen? Sometimes things just happen and sometimes they're intentional. And I'm always interested to find that out. The whole album's good. And um, since it's so recent that I learned who you are, I haven't listened to the other things yet, but I know that that's that's on my list for sure. Uh, let's see. I have so many questions, you guys. <laughs> <laughs> your, your, your gear and everything that was on the stage, it wasn't a huge stage, but everything seemed to fit and to work. And, um, the, everything was nice and bright and clear. I'd love to talk about the instruments you guys are playing. Uh, Bradley, do you mind starting? Yeah. Um, I have a Hoffner. It's like, I think it's mid sixties or something. Um, and yeah, it's, uh, gorgeous. And it like, it has like way too many knobs on it and way too many switches, which I just like how it looked kind of absurd. And, um, uh, it has these like really cool inlays that are very geometric. And so it just kind of, it looks sort of like a, kind of like a toy or kind of like something futuristic sci-fi or something about it that um i really like and i've never seen one before so well, it was amazing. waiting it was waiting for its forever home yeah. yeah and of course it sounds good too you know it but, sounds um, good you did a lot with the bar uh if I'm, i love that yeah and you know i just i feel like you don't see or hear a lot of that in like doom and stoner uh, so I appreciated what you were doing. It was really 
really heavy, a lot of good squeals. Like I was super impressed. Cool. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. And then, uh, Jessica, I know you, you played guitar at that show and you've said that you played bass. That guitar was a cute little guitar. What were you playing? (laughs) Thank you. I love it. Um, I play a Hagstrom guitar with humbucker pickups. Also from the mid six, late sixties, maybe early Mm seventies around that time. Um, it's so amazing. It's awesome. It's only my second guitar ever. The first one I had was the one I got when I was in eighth grade. And so I feel like a real grown up now. (laughs) Um, and I love it. And I love it. And then the bass I play is like not particular. I mean, I don't even know. It's a bass. nice, it's a Fender jazz bass. It's really nice. My friend will like, we have inherited wonderful gear from friends yeah. over the years who abandon their gear in the practice space. I don't understand it, but the, if they're watching the them, it's mine now. Yeah. It's like yeah. the forever home thing. They just, they know they're not giving it the love it needs and they know you will. Totally. Yeah. So, so I play that sick ass bass, which I don't know anything about, but I love it. And it's great. Uh, it's beautiful as well. It's definitely a vintage Fender jazz bass yeah. and it's incredible. Yeah. yeah. Nice. I play a, a, a jazz bass as well. I don't think it's vintage, nice. but it was a gift. It was just passed on to me. Gift instruments. Hell are yeah. <laughs> <laughs> totally. Totally. I love it. And same with the head. It was his bass head. And then we oh, plugged yeah. a guitar into it and we were like, Wow, that sounds That's fucking sound. awesome. So there it is. That's the sound right there. Fantastic. I love it. <laughs> You're going to hear some howling. I got a husky. Oh, oh cute. Wow. Yeah. A husky howling out of siren. <laughs> more than one. Oh. <laughs> I was going to say, it sounds like more than one. <laughs> well, I have I have a, a one dog that's part coyote. So that yip. Yeah. What? Come here, Frank. How'd you get a part coyote dog? Yeah, that's been an interesting thing. I didn't know that. Come here, baby. Those are my Freya. Uh, <laughs> She's a good Look baby. at the face. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> this is such a perfect video call moment where the animal comes in, you know? Exactly, exactly. <laughs> She's always with me, that one. She's a she's a magical creature that never leaves me. <laughs> no. So, but uh yeah, where were we? So, okay, drums, 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 drums. Those drums. First of all, I really like the set you're playing on. Uh but I just- Oh, that you know what? I'm the queen of the borrow. So, that was a that was the snake mother drum set. I'm always right. like, "Yo, who bringing drums?" Cool, That's I'm great. on it. <laughs> that makes you <laughs> 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 Well, and we know that's a good set. I've talked to them about their set, but man, <laughs> you were so fun to watch. So fun to watch. And I love watching drumming yeah. anyway. Drumming is the, is the one, you know, I, I feel pretty talented musically in a lot of ways, but I get behind a drum set and I feel so confused. I'm dyslexic and I don't know what's going on. So, but I love to watch drummers and, um, you were very entertaining and <laughs> super entertaining. My band and I were like, wow, this is so cool. Uh, the The way that you played was is very, very straightforward and, and very clean and very, very precise. And then all of a sudden you do these fills like, oh, oh, they, they can do that too. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Did you always play drums? I have. Yeah. I've played drums for a long time since I was like in the fifth grade. Um, and I grew up playing jazz and I feel like that has always stuck with me. Okay. I get it now. I get it now. I was wondering about that. Yeah. That makes a lot of sense. Okay. I love it. Uh, you guys, I, I know, uh, you're talking about trying to do more shows. Have you guys been able to really start playing like you want? Are you still working towards getting that name out there. Oh, I feel like we're always playing shows. We play a lot. We play a lot. Yeah. And uh, I think the one thing we want to do is play outside of the Bay more and make that happen. So we're going to be doing that this summer. We've been down to LA before and we're going to be getting out of town more. That's kind of our goal. 
Um, but we also love playing here and we've met a lot of cool bands and been able to do tons of cool shows as a result of just starting out. We kind of like, we like said we've been playing since 2015, but we didn't really start playing a ton of shows until like after the pandemic. Cause we were go- getting going and then, well, you know, it's still going, but we were getting going and then everything shut down and we took a long break. We were living in different places and doing different things. And, uh, in about in 2022 is when we really started playing again. And so yeah. it's kind of like our second, it's like our comeback. Yeah. We're in the comeback. Yeah. No one knows that except <laughs> us, yeah. but I will. <laughs> we were playing more and more shows. Yeah. Like 2019, early 2020 and then the pandemic really. Mm-hmm. Oh yes. I've, you know, a lot of people have experienced that. And it is yeah. nice to see the comeback now, this uh, this sort of renaissance that's happening. Totally. There's a good vibe out there. And I feel like, I don't know, maybe I wasn't paying attention before, but the Bay Area is just great right now. There's so many great bands doing amazing things. There's lots of queer bands, heavy bands yeah. of all types, just playing all the time. And it's fun to be involved. Yeah. It is. It really is. I I live a couple hours from where you guys are at, but I was in the Bay Area twice this week for shows. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Um, and, you know, speaking of, you know, queer identifying, I got to see the legendary Nico Case in Santa Cruz. And oh, that's um, right. Yeah. I mean, it, the Bay Area's got so many great things happening. And if you guys are starting there, then you just expand from there. And I'm going to definitely pull you guys into my area (laughs) so uh i would love to hear about your influences but i don't like to ask you know who do you guys fashion your band after i i'm more interested individually like what band or musician got you personally into wanting to play into wanting to be a musician that's a good question that's a great question i like to ask teachery questions (laughs) Um, okay. There's a drummer that comes to mind for my youth. Um, well, okay. John Theodore, who was the drummer in the Mars Volta. Um, I loved the Mars Volta as a teenager. I was obsessed. I tried to learn all his parts tried. That's the word. Um, cause he's so great and he just really pushed me. And I think that's probably one of the most besides like jazz drummers, like Art Blakey. He's probably one of my favorites ever. And, um, but those two drummers, I think are really up there. And I also like, I'm from Virginia and I'm just going to say it and it's embarrassing, but (sighs) Dave Matthews, (laughs) (laughs) but that drummer, that drummer, do not be embarrassed. It is okay. As I'm okay. I'm going to go on a little, little tangent now. Go there. (laughs) When, when I was a young teenager and I did not like what I heard on the radio, the things that were coming out on the radio to me were boring and watered down and, uh, just, blech, you know, uh, I would go and steal my dad's you know, obscure prog rock CDs and listen to that to get some satisfaction. But Dave Matthews came out. I, I mean, maybe I might've been 14, 15 when crash came out and I got a hold of that CD somehow. I didn't get it from my dad. So I got it somewhere. I don't know. And I meditated on that CD for like a year because there was so much going on and it was edgy. And it was, it was a little bit like, I, some of the, some of the lyrics were a little bit like, oh, I probably shouldn't listen to this. It's a little adult here and there, you know, (laughs) (laughs) Carter Beaufort, that's a really good drummer. And, and no Virginia kid is untouched by Dave Matthews if you grew up in the 90s. In, yeah. I'm sorry. <laughs> well, I was punk since I was born, so I've never liked the uh, beat. No, I'm joking. I'm joking. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I, um, I just, I grew up loving, um, like, my musical coming of age, I think, was really like actually punk rock. And so, and it was <laughs> embarrassingly enough, I got a punk rama CD and that totally changed my life. That's and funny. yeah, yeah, it was great. I mean, it was so fantastic. And then I got, I got punk rama volume two, three, four, and 
Then I got fat music for fat people, the fat record stuff. And then I got really into lookout records. And then I finally discovered riot girl and my whole life, like truly changed. And I just was like, Oh wow. Like I like sought out any band with a girl in it, any bands that were queer with a girl in it. And then as soon as I heard any, like the idea of riot girl and I got a bikini kill record, I was like, okay, I'm sold. I'm like I can be in a band. And so I just was like playing guitar, trying to learn Bikini Kill songs, also trying to learn Blink-182 songs, which is really funny to think about now. I love them. Um, I grew up in SoCal, so that was my DMV, I guess. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it was like, we really liked Blink-182. No, 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 no not never. Um, and then I just was like, yeah, I listened to Bikini Kill, Slater Kinney, the Frumpies were huge for me. I really loved them. And then, um, like I got really into like lookout records as well and thought the Bay area was so cool forever. And I loved like 15 and crimp shrine and then worked my way through as many varieties of punk as possible. And then later on is when I, when I really got into and learned about like heavy music, stonery and sludgy and doomy stuff. And my first thing I ever heard in that was electric wizard and they totally blew my mind. And I was just like, this is the best music ever. This is such like, it like shook me to my core in the best mm-hmm. possible way. And then I was like, Oh, the little like bratty punk music I was playing on my guitars and in like little bands here and there, I was like, Oh, I can just play like heavy, crazy, loud, intense music. This is what I, um, so yeah, yeah that was my, and like Sonic, and all that kind of stuff but yeah for sure isn't isn't the natural progression for us punk kids to go to doom it just is feels like it yeah (laughs) it was like it just really is i was like oh my god yeah it was great (laughs) it was a great moment when i first heard funeralopolis that was it was it for me (laughs) (laughs) that is a great record yeah what about you bradley um the first cassette I ever bought was Please Hammer Don't Hurt Him, uh, which I loved <laughs> in fourth grade. Wait, I don't know what it is. MC Hammer. Oh, MC Hammer. Yeah. Oh. Again, weird. Uh, <laughs> Not me just want to play guitar. <laughs> no, that made me want to move pants. And yeah. Dance and Which stuff. you have. Yeah, I guess. Ask me more pants. Yeah, days. totally. Um, no, I think like the first, like around early high school um i was very obsessed with dinosaur jr and Soundgarden and nirvana and stuff mm-hmm. like that um i loved jay mascus's guitar playing thought it was like very careening and sort of like dramatic and melodramatic and i just like that was cold with him as a lyricist and like a singer being like morose and like kind of like unemotional and and yeah and with Soundgarden like I was always in love with with their guitar playing um uh both Chris and Kim and Kim and a Kim a great Kim <laughs> and speaking of which I actually was just remembering that when I when the the, the riff in Madam I was definitely like thinking about this one Soundgarden song, which I still think is like one of the heaviest things, um, called Fourth of July. And it's just like it's very slow and Well, um, we just were chanting Kim Kim. I where'd the name come from? I love it. It's just so so cool. Just Kim. What's the story? <laughs> I feel like that's you, yeah. Well I knew it. I was <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh my God, I was thinking of, I don't know where it came. It was like, a, it was an idea that I held with me for a while. And I was like, first of all, writing Kim looks so great with all these lines, you know, so I was like, oh, that's cool. And then I was thinking of band names and I was like, you know, I like these band names that are like, that like are like vague. And they could mean a lot of different things. And Kim is 
this great word that means so many different things, right. but it also could be an acronym and it also looks so great and it has this kind of angular like visual representation and it's like iconography. And I was like, think of all the Kims that are good and bad and neutral and indifferent and whatever, all of the ways in which Kim references so many different things. It's, it's like this full and empty signifier at the same time. And I just got like really into this idea. And I was like, what do you guys think? And it just sounds nice. Like Kim is such a beautiful word and name. So I was like, what do you yeah. think? And you guys were down. Yeah. <laughs> you know, that's probably why you can't find us on the internet. Cause yeah, there's a million hard. Kim. There's so, so many Kim. Good luck. Yeah. It is. It yeah. is. <laughs> a friend of mine has a little girl and that's her middle name. I think it's just a, so, so she has the pin now, but <laughs> I think it, uh, oh, it's <laughs> Yeah. yeah, yeah, there you go. <laughs> yeah, I think it's I I think it's such a cool name because it does have so many meanings as one syllable, Kim. And it is I think it's a it's a very feminine sounding word, but it's not uh not a like a not a weak sounding word, you know? It's Kim. It's like it's beautiful and I love that you have that name on a heavy hitting band. I think that's really, really cool. <coughs> I am really excited to see what you guys are going to be up to next. Are you still still playing and still getting shows? Yeah, we play tomorrow at uh, yeah. this warehouse in West Oakland called uh, First Church of the Buzzard. Yes, I got to get out there sometime. I love that. <laughs> it's a good place. <laughs> That's great. Well, it's so cool because, like I said, I couldn't really find much about you. I didn't know. I have no idea, like, if you guys were, you know, getting a name for yourself. But you were opening for Feytooth, and they are opening for Elder, and that's kind of a big deal. So, <laughs> so yeah, you guys are leaving your mark for sure. <laughs> Cool. cool thank you yeah we were happy to find them i didn't know about them and then they hit us up and they're really cool yeah. i liked that band they a lot so, so good they were yeah. yeah i the the interview i did with them was super fun they're just they're 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 so smart they're so talented they are so young and they're just making it happen i thought they were young i didn't know for sure but i was like i think you guys are young they're like my kid's age <laughs> i love that yeah well we've been really lucky we played with such incredible bands like i think it's been it's just been like amazing we've gotten play with Bragana. we played with king woman wow we played with here's yeah. who am i forgetting ms moore that was Ms. Moore, um, divide, yeah. divide, and divide and dissolve divide and dissolve so like we've gotten to play with so many of our favorite bands nowadays and like feel really lucky to be able to yeah just can hopefully continue to play with everybody that we love and respect so where did you guys play with king woman at the dna lounge it was for a noise pop show uh in 2022 part of our comeback year that no one knows yeah. you know yeah the comeback year that <laughs> now 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 is a revolution <laughs> of the comeback <laughs> That's great. I love that. <laughs> and you're in your practice space now. Yeah. Yes. So uh, it, I love the, the background. It looks very, very cool. How often? Yeah, you want to tour? This is a Kim. Yeah. This is a Kim right here. Yep. That's this, a is a, mm -hmm. no name. this is a hurricane named Kim. That's great. I love it. I love it. Yeah, this is our leather chaise lounge that we have that we're sitting on. Mm -hmm. uh, have a nice we actually have a full stage over there can you see it yes oh you see that fun yeah pretty sick right yeah so we got a nice space but the hurricane is really what ties the room together 